Hey folks, it's Fridgar. How, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. You can see along the field there on the steep field, on the steep hill, we've left a little strip of weeds been left behind by the sprayer. We're going to pick those up. We're definitely going to pick those up and uh, take care of those. Whether or not we do go back into the other field and take care of those stripes, the claw marks. So that's what they look like. It's like some giant beast has clawed its way across the field there. So we, we may or may not go and take care of those. Something that really, really, really irritates me big time about hired help in this game is this insistence on leaving these little spots at the end of every row. And I'm certain the giants do that deliberately. I don't know why, but it is one of the single most annoying things about this game for me. Um, well, the, the, I don't know if it's the single most annoying. But anyway, the, the, there are many annoyances in this game. And that is but one of them. The fact that it leaves that bit behind. I really hate that. Why do they have it so that it stops sort of that early and leaves those little dots everywhere? It's it, it means that either you've got to go around and pick them all up or you've got to train yourself to ignore them. And some weeks, as I was talking about yesterday, some weeks those dots are really difficult for me to ignore and other weeks I'm able to sort of squash that down. Although sometimes it takes effort. I will admit, I will freely admit that sometimes it takes effort. The, the other thing with it is I know it's not much at all in the grand scheme of things like you, you go and leave that whether you go and pick them up or you leave them it's probably not even going to make a liter of difference to the entire yield of the crop across that massive great big field over there and yet i still feel the need to go and get those spots sometimes well i'm i always think i always feel the need to go and get the spots it's just whether or not i actually act on that or if i sort of crush that desire mercilessly within me um either option really uh, uh, both both happen and and both are equally viable in in my head so um yeah uh, these these things can happen uh let's bring you back in round here i'm gonna probably want the fertilizer spreader before i want the sprayer so i will put it there in front of the mower we're not gonna be using the mowers again i don't think we may use them, like, we may end up having to use the mowers at the rate we're going with uh, constantly um, like having to extend things in order to fully get the pigs taken care of. It wouldn't surprise me if we end up having to do more. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to go all the way up past the stone or are you going to stop there? You are going to go all the way up past the stone. I could go and pick up those bits over there so there's there's a spot just there that i can see and there's another spot there there's one back here there's one there that i personally missed i thought i'd pick that bit up there's another over here it's, it's these all the way along here these, these are irritating me i'm gonna i'm gonna try and do something about some of this here you watch it'll go up to there and i'm gonna turn that one off now Going to run down here, and I'm going to get that little spot there. Like that. Well, there's there's one spot out. It's still got another spot here somewhere. Where, where's the other bit? There's another bit here somewhere, but then I've... I know why. It's because there's not actually a weed growing on that little bit, and so therefore I can't... I don't want to waste the spray. I don't want to waste the herbicide on nothing here, so let's let's not do that anymore. Let's go back over here, and I'll start from this top side and work my way down. I think that will be a better way of doing this. Let's get that lined up a little bit over there, and we've got the last little bits of this field to go and do. There, right, you will run down through there. And just do the last couple bits and then we'll use up the rest of the herbicide that's in this tank in order to just finish off this field completely. Whether we will be able to finish off the field completely, I don't know. We will have to wait and see. You. We'll start you up and we will take this trailer over and we will tip it out for the cows. 
There's another load of food gone in for them. And then we, we're not far off of being uh, needing to go and skip the night. We should finish the spraying before we have to go and skip the night, which would be a great thing if we can. I'm hoping that we don't run out of herbicide before we've got to go and do that. Because that means then we'll be able to just, that, that, that job will be done. And the only thing that we'll have after that is feeding animals and then getting through to um, our next harvest. Which is going to take us that much closer to finally finishing everything that we want to finish here. 241 sheep, 9 to go on those. 212 pigs, just 88 to go to fill everything up. I could go and get some corn now and fill these up with all the corn that we've got. Cows, we've got just two left. By morning, we will have all 200 cows that we're going to get in this pasture right here. Every single cow that we're going to get. And the chickens, we're not going to do anything with. So now I'm not selling any more sheep. We did sell 10% of the sheep, but we won't be doing that again. They're going to stay as they are. So I've, I've only got 11,000 litres of barley there. I've got corn and I've got no protein crop. So we're, we're basically waiting on the next harvest. Now, wool at the moment is 667. I've got quite a bit of wool over there. But at 667, I have no interest whatsoever in selling. That's definitely not going to happen. I will... Or will I? Let's have a look. Uh... I get 11,000 there. There's, there's uh, almost 12,000 barley. Chickens in here, they're doing all right. So I could just load up. No, I'm not going to load up the rest of that. We will wait. But the corn in there, I could get a full trailer load of corn. Actually, I don't think it's going to hurt. We'll try putting a full trailer. I don't think we're going to get a full trailer load of corn in for the pigs. But we could get most of a trailer load in for them. I'll go and run over this way and go to there. Cycle through and there we have corn. So we get that little bit in there. We've got 230 litres of herbicide left in that trailer in the machine up there. We've got this little stripe left to do. Let's go and have a look at the map. We've done everything over here apart from one little spot there. We're going to have to, like, just tidy out this little bit over here. And that's the main line coming back through here. We probably won't get all of it. We can wiggle up and down as we work our way back through there to pick out the rest of that. That shouldn't be too difficult. And then that's the last of it. I'm only going to use up the herbicide that we've got in the tank. I'm not going to take any more than that. So I'm going to just switch over to manual driving now. And go and get this little bit down here like this. If I spin you round like that and take up that bit. And then I go up here and take out that bit. There's that spot done. So now we've got the bits down here on the hill. This is the, the, the more important bit as far as I'm concerned. Getting that there. And then anchor round like that. Get that bit. Same again over here. If I do it like this, it will take out all of it as I work my way back across the field. It, it's going to need to do that all the way across, I think. Because even though I've got weeds on show in places, I think according to the map, it's actually all the way across. And there may be another line of it as well above this line that I'm doing here. Which means that I'm going to want to do this a bit more, actually. We'll see. I'll do this bit here first. And then I'll go to the line above me. Still got 100 litres left in the tank. And then back over here. There's a bit more there. I'll take that out like that. And then if I travel up here, there's another little bit there that you can clearly see. I'll take that out. So now we have a look. We've actually got rid of all of it. couple little spots here. But... I can't see them. I can't see where the actual weed is. So it's, it's to do with where the weeds are. I have 105 litres left. There is a bit over here somewhere. That's sort of down this way. But I don't quite know where. So if I do it like that going fast down through there. That's gotten rid of that. And then all I've got is the last bit in here. So we'll start folding up. Like this. 
And then we'll unfold again. And I'm going to take this bigger slice over here first. And do something with that. And yes, I've just gone and left a little spot at the top end of it. Which actually is going to irritate me more than any of the stripes are going to irritate me. So I want to go and get that. And take that bit out. I missed. How did I miss that? Quite get it soon enough. So I, I, I want to get this thicker stripe here. That's going to have more of an impact on the yield of the field than the, any of the rest of it. So we'll take all of you out there. And then I'll go all the way across over this side. This is probably not the best way to be doing spraying on your field. Um, like the, the amount of wheel spinning and sliding around I'm doing and sharp turns, I've probably messed up the rows of crop quite badly. And if the seed has been in there long enough for weeds to germinate and come up through, that means the little corn plants, uh, the, the little plants in there, I think it's wheat that we've got in here, they've also germinated and just started to come through. And so where I'm driving with the wheels particularly aggressively, it's very likely to have damaged the tiny little plants that are just... The little tiny leaves are just coming out the seeds. Right, my driving is very likely damaging those, and that will prevent them from growing. We don't want that. You, you drive slowly and carefully when after germination. It's Otherwise, it, bad stuff happens. It, it stops it. It kills the seed. Like you, you break off those first leaves and that that are coming out of the seed, and that's the end of it. Once a plant is established a little bit more and you damage the plant just by driving it on uh, driving on it, it will knock it back a little, but not very much, not to a noticeable extent. Uh, later on, once it gets a lot more established and it's grown a more sturdy stem, then it's obviously snapping the stem, that is going to have quite an impact on it. And we'll go there. I've only got 25 litres left, so I'm just going to use up the rest of it on this end of the field right here. It's not enough to take out another stripe. And then as soon as that's finished, we can fold this one up and we can wash it and service it and put it away and, and all the rest of the stuff that we need to do. So there we go. We've gotten rid of most of it. We've got three stripes left in the field. Going to leave those. Not actually going to get involved with doing anything about them. You, I'm going to bring over this way so that you are ready to hose down in the morning. I'm not going to hose you down at the moment. I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to skip back to this one. And I am going to feed the pigs right now. Probably not going to be able to feed them everything. But we now need to... It's 8 o'clock that we go to bed. So I can start fast forwarding now. I've got another hour and a half that I can fast forward, which is going to get us a little bit more space in the pig pen to get just a little bit more of this uh, corn that I'm bringing in. Right up through there. Just bring you in through this way. I want to be facing this way to do it. There, like that. And start unloading now so i'm going to keep the time fast forwarding as we unload we'll see how much of this we can fit into the pigs we get several thousand liters in here they've got a nice lot of straw in here they're going to need more than that and if we go and have an actual look at the pigs in here we're on 215 now i get another one in 45 minutes oops it's eight o'clock right that's got to stay on five times. You know what? You can stay there and we'll just let that one just run, uh, drop itself down via gravity. And if I go running over this way, our crops have now grown to their first stage, which is good. We've done all the weeding. We've done all the fertilizing. We've done everything that we need to do. We're going to take our 11-hour break until 7 a.m. now. We've got a nice sunny day coming up. We've got 1,133 in property maintenance. We no longer have to worry about any loan costs because we don't have a loan anymore. We've paid all of that one off. We've got 244 sheep. We get another one in an hour. Full on chickens. Full on cows. No more cows coming in. That is it for cows. They are completely full. And we've just got to top them up with mixed ration. Pigs over here at 231. We've just got 69 pigs left to go. Corn, we've got that in there. And we're waiting on wheat barley plus the soybeans canola. Canola is the one that we're making. Uh, we're making, we're growing. So 
Overall, we're doing pretty well with our animals. Wool over this side. How are we doing with wool and what is the price? That's another important thing. Let's have a look. Uh, price for wool. It's 781 at the moment and climbing. So we've got to keep an eye on that. That one's nine. That was almost full. That one's just about empty. That one's got a couple thousand left in it still as well. So at the moment, we've got a bit of room in the wool pallets to put some more wool in. The first thing that we got to do in the morning, though, is we've got to go over to you, and we've got to go and get the milk from the cows. And we're not going to quite have maximum yield from the cows today because we haven't had 24 hours with every cow in the pen. But uh, we're not doing too bad. We, we, we had it almost full. We got just over a thousand liters, uh, sorry, a thousand dollars per thousand liters of milk coming in this morning. Which is quite nice. That's not bad. Thousand per thousand, so we're getting a dollar a litre. I don't mind a dollar a litre on our milk prices. I'd say that was quite reasonable. I was thinking maybe I should have put the trailer... Except that I've got... This, this job's got to be done first, so that trailer over there, that one will just have to stay where it is. Because this job here, we have to do this job first. This will be the first thing that we do every morning. Bring you back round like this. Back you up this way. There we go. And bring you into there like that. And then load up. So we've got 28,600 litres. We're not quite getting one full tanker load of milk per day. But we're not far off. Right? We're really not very far off of one complete full tanker load of milk every day. Which is it's not bad going really. Uh, straw we have none. We've got zero straw available. Which means that we've got to wait until that straw is available in there. And then we can bale it all up. And we've got a few bales for bedding and stuff like that in here on the farm. But we've got to wait for that to grow. It's not going to be ready today. It might be ready to harvest tomorrow. So that's two days worth of food and everything else that the animals have got to use up before we get more coming in and this is where it's going to get difficult with the pigs the cows we got no problem with that at all we got so much that that thing over there is completely full so we got no issues with cows or with sheep we got masses of hay sat there in bale form for the sheep so we're not going to have any trouble with them either but the pigs staying on top of the amount of food we're going to need to keep those pigs happy and fed is going to be tricky. Uh, we've still got 69 of them to go. We are getting one every 45 minutes. So one pig every 45 minutes is not so bad. You know, we, we can live with that. Uh, what is... Let's just let that all go out there. 29 to have a fraction under 30 grand there. Let's go and have a look in here. Eggs, they're now coming up. We're on 2,000 at the moment. And wool. So we're just going to leave both of those. We're not going to do anything with that. And if we have a look in here, pigs have got 41,000 slurry. Cows have got 47,000 slurry. So we've got two slurry tankers full for slurry that we could go and get and sell that as well. That's got to go back onto five times speed now. I'm going to bring you out round like this. It's a lot easier, I think, rather than bothering to shunt round too much at this stage. All right, we know what we, we know the dealie with these. So I'll bring you out there, and then I'm going to get the slurry tanker on, and that means that we can start selling a little bit of the slurry. This truck here does not have a lot of maneuverability. On our next series, I'm thinking of having a flat front one, a, a European-style truck rather than a US-style one. These with the... Um, cab over design rather than the cab behind the engine design um it's a lot easier for maneuvering rounds that the, the, these don't tend to have quite the turning the the small turning circle that the cab over designs do um these require a lot of room for swinging out round stuff and i, I sometimes think that the wheels don't seem to turn quite as sharp as the cab over designs either I don't know if that is actually the case or not. I, I've, I've no idea, but I, I get the impression certainly from within the game. Um, but then I have been told by a few people that these vehicles here aren't really designed for manoeuvring in close quarters. These vehicles right here 
are designed for very long distance driving. Right? They're designed for long, long distances and uh, they're sort of, yeah, you, 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 you wouldn't be expecting to do lots of close quarters maneuvering with one of these. So we'll get that one loading up there. You over here, I'm going to, well, it's, I haven't got any more food to put in for the pigs. I could put some more corn in. I could go and get some more of that. So we are going to have to grow another round of corn. Whether I do it in the big field or the small field, I don't quite know yet. It will depend on what other grains we get. Um, I'm going, I'm going to load up more corn. I'm, I'm going to put more of it in for the pigs and we'll see how they get on. It's, they, we, do, we get 10 days worth, don't we? So, you ten, another full trailer there. I don't think that's going to be enough. All right, we get 10 days worth goes in here. So, it does take quite a bit to fill it up. But then, once it's full, it's, it, it's doing well. And I really do think in here, we're going to need... So I know that we need one more crop. But whether we've got enough there for the canola, or whether I'm going to need yet another one on top of that... I'm almost certainly going to need another corn crop. And I was thinking it was going to be this one on one more harvest and we'd be done. But I'm starting to think that maybe we will actually need this harvest plus two more after this in order to be able to properly stay on top of and ahead of these pigs over here. These, these pigs are a bit of a menace, to be frank. To be, to be perfectly frank, these pigs are a bit of a That wasn't supposed to happen. What was supposed to happen was... Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. That was supposed to happen. That's what we were supposed to do right there. Now, we will run you round over here, and I'm going to go and get the bucket on. I don't want the bale spike. I want the bucket. And I want to pick up the food in front of the pig pen. I'm going to tip that in for pigs before I tip the corn out. Because uh, there's a few thousand litres of pig food that's sat there in front of the pigs. So let's unhitch that one there. And then swing back over this way and go and grab that bucket so that we can get that bit going. There. That's it. Take you... And then bring you back in over this way. Now, we have only got time ticking on five times speed at the moment. I'm going to leave that until after I've fed the animals. So, I'll come over here and I may as well just pick up the food here in front of the sheep while I'm passing through. Because that's usually only two buckets anyway, so it's nice and easy. And we'll go and do the same with the chickens in just a second. There, grab that lot like that. Tip that in for the sheep. That's done. And now we can go up here and we can pick up for the pigs. So I'm just going to swing you around like that and line you up a bit. And then we can go through and clean them up. Now we get two or three bucketfuls of this. Let's have a look. Somebody did say the other day that they looked at the exact quantities that I put in for the pigs and added it up and said that yes... The pig food follows the same quantities, and I was getting exactly 5% in the root crop section um, for pigs overall. For, for food overall, 5% of this mixed feed that goes in here, that's what I was getting. So I'll pick all of that bit up right there, and so there's three bucketfuls so far. We do do very nicely out of the pigs. Now, with, with all of this food that they're wasting. There's three bucketfuls. There's four bucketfuls right there. Like that. And one more little bit over here. There we go. So, there's four and a half bucketfuls. So, we've got well over 4,000 litres of food has just gone in there for the pigs. Which has given us 214 litres of sugar beet. And then we've got that much left on the corn. So, I'll bring that bucket over like that and bring you round and then I want to switch over to this one bring you up here like this and tip out the corn right in there so start you tipping and I'll jump straight back to this one while that one's tipping in and I will go over here to the chickens and just tidy them up we could go and put a little bit in for the chickens. I'm not going to worry about that today. They've got 10 days worth of food they get all together. 
so we can just afford to for a couple of days at least just pick it up like this and and leave them to it uh, if we go in here, 207,900. They're full. They are completely full. That's, that's pretty good. And the chickens in here, they've got about a quarter empty on there. So nothing much that we need to worry about with them. The only job I got left to do now is to tidy up the cows. That's the last job that we need. We've got no straw left for putting anything else in for cows or pigs until we've done our harvest. And... There's nothing else that we can really do. So I've either I can either pick up this and put it in the trailer like I've been doing, or I can just dump it straight back in for the cows. And I'm thinking now, I'll just dump it straight back in for the cows. There's little point in us saving that little bit of silage every day. Uh, we've only got a few more days before we can say that we're finished here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we've got a few more days. It may end up that uh, we find out that we really cannot grow enough food to keep all these pigs happy. And we are indeed going to need to buy more land, cut down more trees, and prolong this series uh, right up until the release of FS21. I don't want to do that, though. I really don't want to do that if, I, if it can be helped. That trailer... We have emptied that trailer. We've used up that entire trailer. We've got one more pig has just gone in. So it's made a slight difference. We've got 232 two now on the pigs. Um, but yeah, I don't really want to prolong this series any further. If we do find out that we need that extra little bit. How much money are we getting for us? Uh, 1,170 there for our slurry. So not masses of money. I did, I did wonder. I, I, I thought that maybe it was going to keep going higher and higher. But no, that's it there. Uh, I'll bring you back under there, and I will start that one pouring in. And then if we have a look over here with the pigs, that is completely full. I've got a field of wheat and a field of canola growing, which I'm hoping would take care of most of that. Still got 68 pigs that we need to get in order to fill them up completely with food. So we need a lot of this in order to keep them going. And unfortunately, if we take a look back through here, I've only got 22,000 litres of corn. So I definitely need at least one more harvest of corn. And I suspect I'm going to need the big field full of corn rather than small field full of corn. Which means that it's going to end up taking us quite a bit longer to um, get there. Because if I need the big field full of corn, I may not have enough space, enough um, growing space to grow the other crops that I need at the moment in order to just sort of finish off everything else that we need from in here. Right, you can stay there a second, and you over here. We've already established that even if I tip the silage in, like it's, it's not ever going to be used. But at the same time, I would like to... If I do it like that, is it going to pick up the rest? It doesn't. It just tips it out on the ground. Stubbornly. Doesn't actually let me pick it up. But no, I'm, I am just going to... Despite me knowing that this doesn't actually uh, benefit the cows in any way, shape, or form. And it's a waste. Complete and total waste of silage. The time that it takes to load it into the trailer and ferry it over. Uh, honestly, I, I can't really be bothered with doing that. We've done it so many times. We've done it so much. We've got so much silage there. It's not worth the bother. So we'll just keep spooning this in for the cows. We don't need to fill the cows up on the silage piece. They don't have to have a whole load of silage going into their pen in order to completely fill them up. Uh, we only need to fill them up completely with the mixed ration. However, I am just going to like start pouring in a little bit of silage in there so they've got some on standby. 463,000 litres there. We definitely need a bit more for them. This tractor... But now this tractor can just stop right there. I don't actually need that tractor again. And then I can jump back into you and I can go and get some more food for the cows. And we're just going to start fast forwarding now. I'm going to put it on 120 times speed, leave it running fast. I'll bring you round and let you start loading up. And then while I'm doing that, I will also go and get the truck and take that one round and start loading up some more slurry. I've got enough room to, enough room, enough time to go and do that. I, 
I've definitely got enough time to go and do it at least once because I can go and get a full load from the pigs. Don't think I've got another full load from the cows at the moment, so that would require me to go to the cows and then to, you know, shunt around to the pigs and so on. So we'll just take a quick run over to the pigs and get a full tanker load from them. Right over this side. Just in there. And 44,000 in there, right. And you are ready over here. So the big news of the day, obviously, is that we have now finally reached a full capacity pen on the cows. I think this is actually something that we can be quite proud of. We have worked our way up to 200 cows on this pen right here. And not only have we got 200 cows on this pen right here, not only have we got 200, pen, uh, 200 cows, but we have also got enough food to fill that pen up completely. And that's no small achievement. We've done really well on there. I think that does deserve a congratulatory self-pat on the back situation. Because, quite frankly, that's, it takes a, that's a lot of work. That is definitely a lot of work to be able to go and actually do that. Um, we haven't quite filled up the pen yet with all of the food, but we're working on it and we've been putting loads in and we definitely have enough food over here to keep them full for several days. I got 500,000 litres of the stuff in here. If I do that right there, 500, they got half a million litres. And if you look at the cows over here, there's 482 on what's looking at two-thirds to three-quarters right there. Uh, we're looking at, maybe, I'd say, 600,000 litres in total to fill that pen up. Something along those lines. So I need a few more trailer loads to completely fill this one up. And then if that is for 10 days, they're using two, just under two trailer loads of food per day. So... We've got, with the 500,000 there, plus the more that is ready to be made, we've, we can easily take care of all needs of cows. We've got all of the bales over there for all needs of sheep. We've got enough corn for all needs of chickens. And those pens have all been filled up before now. The chickens are currently full. The sheep aren't far behind. They've only got four to go. We're not emptying them again. Um, keeping them full is easy enough. So it's just the pigs now. It's just the pigs. We've got corn at the moment, so it's only these two. Except that we don't quite have enough corn. When the pigs reach a full pen, we're not going to have quite enough corn there to be able to max out that pen with corn. So we definitely need at least one more corn harvest. The big deciding factor is going to be how we are with wheat and canola. We've got to fill those up. And we've also got to have some spare as well to be able to keep that pen full for the next couple of days while we grow more crop in the field. That's going to be the slightly tricky part of it. I'm confident we can do this. I am confident that we can do this because of the amount of grain that we've got and we've been getting. I think that we will be able to get a surplus. It's just how long is that going to take? How many more harvests are we going to have to do before we actually reach that point? Um, the, serious, the, the, the more serious question is, are we going to do it before we run out of food for the sheep and the cows? I think we will. I'd be very surprised if we run out of food for the sheep and the cows before we get to that point. Um, oh, that's the other thing. How's the wool doing? I need to check the wool prices. They got Wool price is all the way up, so I'm going to bring that all the way down, and we're going to sell the wool right now. Uh, well, it'll be the beginning of the next episode. Wool and eggs we will sell at the beginning of the next episode. It's not the best price. It is above 1,000. We have gone quite a bit higher than that, but it was 600 at the beginning of this episode, so it was down quite a bit, and that was down 400 as well. So we'll sell those two at the beginning of the next episode. And that'll give us even more money here. I'm not quite sure what we're going to use it for yet, but um, we'll use it for something. But anyway, we have run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.